Fresh with our Mexican tans from Cancun, it's postcast. The Jazz. Oh, wait, you... Nah, not quite not yet. Not quite. <laughs> I'll have to sit out for a lot longer for that. Jazz win at 115-101, and a really solid performance, but Rondo, and you have access to things nobody else has, and some insight nobody else has. You, you really feel this win from the Jazz tonight starts all the way back last night, and what you, when the team got back together for a late night practice, and what you saw today at shoot around. Well, I, I think the, the smart thing that, that Coach Corbin did, and, I, and I'm sure they did it in practice yesterday, was refresh the players' minds on, on, on the offense by going over every play that you have, uh, going by, and using every option on those plays, uh, and, and to go along with you can. It, your conditioning, you know, those type of things that will get you ready to start, you know, a ball game. You have one day of practice before you play a basketball game, and, and you need to be ready for it. But it, you just don't get ready for it just by going over your defensive and offensive plans on what you want to do against that team. You have to prepare yourself there as well. Uh, even this morning in practice, they went over every play, and they just – and, and uh, you like to call the floppy. They went over the floppy uh, quite a bit this morning. Uh, but – they and, and and worked on the zone. I mean, that type of preparation, I think, got the Jazz ready, especially early in the basketball game, you know, to, to win this game. I don't know if I was just eager to be back here tonight or just ready to get going, or I don't know. But I, I'm kind. I don't really feel like being analyst mode right now. I'm pretty fired up. Seven <laughs> games over 500 have caught the Warriors for six in the West. Now the Warriors' schedule is very nice for them. April on, they finish almost entirely at home, but they look pretty broken to me. And the Jazz look the opposite. Alec Burks closes the game at the point. He continues to play well. This Derek Favors plays great. Gordon Hayward back on the floor was amazing tonight. This team just seems to me to be getting a lot stronger each night out. And I, and I think we saw them kind of yeah, – I, I take it back to they, they lost a game to Sacramento. They, they shouldn't lose to Sacramento, but it was a weird night. And they reacted beautifully by grabbing the next one at Oakland against Oklahoma City and then going in and really commanding that win – in Minnesota after that dreadful first quarter. I like so much what I'm seeing right now. So, And I love what I'm seeing right now, just like you. And, and so you ask yourself, David, is, is Jefferson getting better as the season goes on? Is Paul Millsap game is coming around? You remember those guys kind of struggled at the beginning of the year, and, and the Jazz worked very, very hard to, to win basketball games. And so I think now things have changed a little bit. Those guys are – those two guys and, and are, are playing very, very well. Um, but the growth of, of Gordon, the growth of Favors, the growth of Alec Burks now has made this team a threat. And, and you can just see now that this team is starting to materialize to the point where teams could be afraid to play this basketball team. The Jazz, again, and, and I was asked this earlier about the identity of this basketball team. Uh, I don't know if there's an identity other than the fact that this team is, is so strong at home and they have done a great job of protecting their home turf. But they have been able to survive November and December with all those road games and, and the fact that the Jazz did not start the season off playing very, very well. And now they, they had to survive uh, losing Mar um, Mo Williams and, and losing Gordon. They've done a great job of surviving there. So if the identity of this team right now to me is survival. Well, this team's really built for 82 games, is what you're saying. Yep. I want to go back to something you said at the beginning of that. We talk so much about the young guys developing, and, and, it, and we're seeing it. I mean, the, the mantra of this team has been to compete while developing, and it seems very contradictory, and yet somehow they're doing it. And uh, it makes, frankly, the next 48 hours very interesting to see what happens. Let's not ignore that that's lingering out there. Part of my heart kind of dropped as I saw some of these guys walk off the floor tonight wondering if the next time we call a game Saturday in L.A., will, will that be it? Like, yeah. you know, did, did we call the Wheezy for the last time? Did, is Paul Millsap, who's been the identity of his team, possibly going to be moved? I mean, it just seems very strange to think that some of these guys may have played their last game in Energy Solutions Arena with a trade deadline, but that's the reality of this league. But I want to go back to Al, and we talked about this a lot during the broadcast. This guy is a really different player mm -hmm. than he was when we got him. It used to be back to the basket. Obviously, we've all talked about the black hole and the pounding. But even the shots he's taking now are different. He's driving to the basket. He's up and undering. He, mm -hmm. he, he's wheezing is, kinda, is once or twice a night. Right? That was the signature call that we kind of, how do we describe this funky, weird, <laughs> semi-hook shot? Well, let's go to the old Jefferson show and call it the wheezy. Yeah. And it seemed to fit. I, I probably call that once a night now. It's, mm -hmm. He's not using that. 
he's really changed who he is as an offensive player. And, and he's turned into a mid-post player, which means that 15 to 12 foot jump shot is 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 working. Uh, he relies on it. Uh, you can't defend him because if you let him post up on the low block down there, obviously he's gonna he's going to he's going to make it. And and so, and, but he doesn't get to the free throw line because he gets his jumper off, and he doesn't have a problem getting getting his wheezy off there as well. But having a great year from the free throw line, so. Has things changed with this team to the point where it, this is Al Jefferson's team right now? I mean, who else can you give it to because of what he's giving them? You know, Paul Millsap does a great job, and everybody's playing their role and, and doing their, what they need to do to help this team win. But is this Al's some, team right now? At some now? point it might be number 20's team if he plays like he did tonight with yeah, 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 Gordon Hayward was pretty terrific. You know, even coming off the bench, you know, he, he, it's, you, got, you have a point there. But... Al is the one that that you um, that uh, he's showing that leadership role, as you pointed out a little earlier. It's hard to put a single night in a capsule and compare it to another night in a capsule, but the dramatic difference between what the Utah Jazz were tonight compared to the last time they played the Warriors might be the best representation of the progress because the Jazz got there handed to them by the Warriors the last time. It got favors, got frustrated, got thrown out. Tonight, the Jazz just blasted this Warrior team. Now, they are off kilter, but the Jazz seem to be on kilter. And the best way to describe it is if you look at the defensive trend, the Warriors are going the wrong way. The Jazz have become a better defensive team. Uh, and that's the key to this whole home stretch is whether the Jazz can defend. It, it, it's, it's coming along at the right time there as well. But what beat the Jazz the last time these two teams met, met, even though they were here in this arena, was the fast break points. The Jazz were awfully slow in that basketball game. They were 25-5 to five in, in that game against the, uh, against the Jazz. And uh, tonight, a little bit different story. How many, point, how many assists did the Jazz have tonight? 23. A little so short they didn't of my get to 25, their 25, and they didn't quite get to the 42. Get, get they got to 38 42. points in the yeah. paint. Yeah. They win it. Jazz win it. Happy days around Jazz Nation. We'll be back with you actually Saturday from L.A. I will be on Locked on Jazz for the next 48 hours pretty continually. We'll probably do a vocal chat uh, both tomorrow and thursday for you lots of stuff maybe some extra podcasts there's a great one up with john ireland so we'll be in touch i'll be communicating ron will talk with you again on saturday unless i call him this week to get his reaction to the news of whatever <laughs> news might be thursday Let's no news no news i kind of know it's funny you really feel that way don't you yeah, i mean my heart I really, really do. my heart really you kind of feel to these guys they're fabulous people he, he, I, I can tell you i talked to dennis Lindsay for quite a while before the game tonight it's going to have to be something very significant that they feel really moves them in the right direction if it's going to be any move. They're not willing to lose their flexibility unless it's a major thing. They're not going to make a move for Moose's sake. They believe they're winning and heading in the right direction, as we saw tonight. I think tonight even further uh, believe that. They, it is not going to be simply we have to move Al and Paul because we have too many bigs, so we got to make a move. There will be none of that. So Larry Miller's philosophy is still intact there here even though he's gone. Right. And I, if you doesn't Lakers, improve your team, let's not do it. And the Lakers can only hope that Dr. Jerry Buss' <laughs> philosophy hangs with them for a little while. Absolutely. Have a good night.